Welcome everybody. Today's video is called uh, Pearls of Wisdom Becoming Very Great. Uh, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Uh, behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the sons of God and that we should be called the sons of of God. Praise be to God. Amen. You know, when you look at the world today, there's two um, um, paths being taken in, like it was in, the, in the, the, um, the story of Noah. when God said he looked down upon the children of men. Watch this. Father and sons. He looked down upon the children of men and saw that the evil imagination of their mind was continuously to do evil. So what happened now, they become very great inside of evil. Okay, and that was, uh, remember, the children of men. Amen. Uh, that is form of the relationship between the sons of the fathers. Uh, it's that's why God said he, he will punish the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. What does that mean? Of course, you know, God says that the soul that sinners shall die. What God is meaning is that society becomes wicked through the relationships between the fathers and the sons. Remember, Eve was the one that took the apple, but God and, and the scripture says, through man sin entered the world, not through woman, through man, because man is the head of woman. And it's through that relationship between father and son, as the, the um, Genesis says, God looked upon the children of men and saw that the imagination of the ancients of the heart was just to do evil. It means it became very great. And so to the church, amen, will go the opposite way. As to the end time, the Bible says, Jesus shall come back from his bride. They shall be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Meaning the church towards the end will be go from, from to becoming very great inside of righteousness amen completely holy amen praise be to god but washing their garments in the blood of uh, the lamb and that will be through again the relationship the children of men from sons to father why do we know that malachi chapter 4 the last verse god lets us know that before that great and terrible day god shall send his servant elijah who shall turn the hearts watch this children to their fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children many people will start to realize that the world will go wicked through the relationship between the sons of the father or the church will go righteous that's the strength as john and um and the, the, the his letters said i write unto you fathers and then i write unto you children Praise be to God. And we see from the story of Abraham today, chapter 25 and chapter 26 of Genesis, uh, how Isaac now, it says in chapter 26, becomes great, becomes greater, and then became very great. Uh, and how that was held together through the relationship uh, with his uh, father. And that's how important it is uh, um, uh, for us to see the value of our children. That's why in the book of Acts it says, um, this promise shall be to you and to your children's children are far off. Meaning that the gospel, the strength of the gospel, amen, is determined in how we love our children. We want to pass upon our children. Amen. As Jesus said, you shall do greater works then me, uh, it's the heart of the father. The children do greater. That's why I said of Solomon, when he was taking the throne, Solomon shall be greater than his father, David. And it's only with that attitude of our hearts, uh, amen, towards our children, amen, will the gospel, praise be to God, amen, reach the whole earth. Uh, if we don't have that attitude as fathers, then as Malachi says, Lest I come and I will curse, smite the earth with a curse. So here we see God now, and Genesis chapter 25, verse 19, it says this. 
praise be to God, that um, it talks about Isaac being the son of Abraham. And then when Isaac was 40, that um, um, him and Rebecca, Rebecca was barren. And of course, they began to go to God about it uh, and uh, because they've waited 20 years. What do we see here? We see the same formation. Remember, Abraham uh, was having no children, was also barren. And it's repeating itself in Isaac's life, okay? Isaac now is becoming like his father. But, but instead of just trusting God and waiting on God, they now um, begin to be concerned about it. But they should have remembered his father. If Isaac remembered his father, God didn't come until he was a hundred. Praise be to God. And from that, Isaac was born through Sarah when she was 90. He baba kustubi abakapai. But Isaac uh, forgot uh, um, that and therefore they start to go to God and to complain because they don't like it that uh, um, Rebecca is now barren. You see, but what God was doing, he was making Isaac the same as Abraham. Why? Because God knew that you become great when you become like your father. This is why when we as fathers do not turn to God, we leave our children naked because they haven't got something to focus to. And here we see God shaping Isaac's life uh, the same as Abraham. Because every time he would speak to Isaac, he said, I am the God of your father, um, Abraham. Wanting the sons uh, to focus their life around how their fathers was in God. But if we as fathers don't live our best for God, we don't give our children something for God to say when he speaks to them. When, you, when God introduces himself to your son, he said, I am the God of your father. And if God can't do that, then comes the curse. God said, I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, lest I come and I smite the earth of a curse. And what you find is the whole earth now is being cursed because God is not able to come and say to the children, I am the God of your father. And there we see God now deliberately making Isaac's life like Abraham's. But he began to lose sight of that, okay? And that's why he would go blind earlier on and he would be deceived by Jacob and be deceived by his wife Rebecca. Praise be to God because he was losing sight that God wanted him to be just like his father. Our hearts must turn to be like our fathers if God is their God. Amen. And of course, then he, they have uh, Rebecca's twins and there's wrestling going on and she has to go to God and God tells her the twins are Jacob and Esau, of course, which represent two nations that shall wrestle. And this is what happens when we do not have Amen. Fathers to become like in God. It creates nations that wrestle. No wonder there was the First World War. No wonder there was the Second World War. He Baba Kustu. And we don't realize that, that we are giving birth to war every time. Amen. We as fathers uh, don't have something of God to pass down to our children like Abraham. That God would be able to say, your children I want them to be just like you because you please me. Like God said in uh, um, Genesis chapter 18, I love Abraham because he commands his children after him. Praise be to God, uh, which removes curses uh, um, from the earth. Uh, but sadly, Isaac falls short and doesn't recognize that God is making him wait long because he wants him to be just like his father, praise be to God. You know, I was doing a study, and then this shows you the importance of having children. It's huge responsibility. Amen. Um, when you've been, I've been doing a study, just say, of sport, like American football, God's hand is so much on American football, amen, trying to convey a message to the United States of America, but people get so 
caught up in the game, they forget to see what God is saying inside of the game. It's like a parable. Remember, the Bible says, man can receive nothing lest he receives it from above. And God is trying to convey a message to America how important the relationship is between the children and the parents, between the father and between the son. Amen. It will shape the destiny of where America is going and where the church is going. Whether you receive the blessing from God or whether you receive the curse from God. I'll give you an example. Okay. In American football, you have, uh, remember the son and the father, like famous quarterbacks. Uh, amen. You, you have, uh, remember Isaac's journey. He became great, then became greater. They went on to become very great. Uh, you have uh, um, and the most famous uh, quarterback would be, say, um, Tom Brady, okay, playing for, uh, for the um, New England Patriots. Uh, so famous. But he has a relationship with the coach called Belichick. Uh, the most amazing relationship, almost like a father and his son. Tom Brady completely submissive under Belichick as if he was a father. And if you look at the life of Belichick, the coach, he had the most amazing relationship with his father. When his father was coaching the, Na the, the Navy, Naval Academy, um, and Belichick used to come along and from a child and be submissive to his father all the way for 30 years, uh, learning from his father, never being a nuisance, uh, amen, totally honoring his father. And he learned everything he had from his father and then it was passed on to Belichick amen uh, and then Belichick uh, because of that honor remember it says honor thy mother and father that thy days may be long upon the land so what God has done is they're giving honor unto Belichick uh, amen and to the San, um, the, the, um, the um, New England Patriots because of that relationship that he had with his father so the blessing and the most success of all time to any team, they went a whole season for 16 nil. Okay, why? Because the blessing of the honor of the son and the father, amen, was seen there. That God is able now to bless the patriots uh, with a blessing to break all the records. Why? Because God sees, uh, amen, the son's hearts turn to the father and the father to the sons uh, and that's that's the way God is trying to encourage the land to remember the commandments of God but what happened sadly Jesus said having eyes they shall not see having ears they shall not hear the reason why God is blessing amen the New England Patriots is because of that mystery and if we would learn amen the value of our sons and to give them something of God to pass on to them that God could say to your children I am the God of your father and then God is able to make them live long on the land they can go from being great to greater to very great and that's what's happened to um, Tom Brady and Belichick they've gone from being great greater amen and to becoming very great because of the mystery of the relationship between the sons and uh, the father praise be to God and if you look at uh, one of the other examples I saw inside of American football it's riddled with that mystery there's um, uh, in uh, the, the, the YouTube they have 200 videos together uh, examples of famous American footballers and the first one they put there is Michael Vick he was going on to be one of the most famous quarterbacks but Unfortunately, the, the, the pinnacle of his career began to do dogfighting and he ended up losing so much honor and people turned against him but didn't see in uh, Michael Vick's life. He died, his father died young, but he remembered his father being involved in bad things like that. And so there's the attachment you see of the son to the father. Though he'd become famous, he couldn't forget the thing that his father have passed on to him. Praise be to God. And that's the importance and, and, and the effect that we have on, upon our children as uh, fathers, which should encourage us, 
to give them God to pass on to. There we see now in Genesis uh, um, and, um, chapter 26, uh, praise be to God, we have uh, um, Isaac now going down to Egypt. So he's going down to Egypt just like his father did. And God stops him from going down to Egypt. So he turns around and he goes to um, Gehar, which is the Philistines, and Abimelech, which again, Abraham also. So you see, Isaac is just following in the footstep of his father, which is why he ends up very great. And then, uh, amen, uh, he ends up lying about his wife, just like Abraham did. And you see, the strength of his relationship with his father was so strong that even the weaknesses of his father has been passed on to Isaac. The only difference is when Abraham lied about Sarah being his wife, he was telling the truth, even though he was afraid. But Isaac and Rebekah was not uh, um, Isaac's sister, uh, praise be to God, at all. It was more like his cousin. Amen. So there you see Isaac just following in the footsteps uh, of uh, his uh, father, praise be to God. And then he has trouble, amen, with the th wells that was given to him from his father. And he has to dig the wells all over again. And it's not until the third time that um, the, the, the people of Babimelech leave Isaac alone. Amen. The first well he has to dig through arguments and harassing. And that's the level of being great. It's not enough just to be great. Ibakustobia, God wants you to be very great in your house. God wants you to be a very great father. God wants you to be a very great husband. God wants you, amen, to be without spot or wrinkle. But you have to go through arguments and harassings and the troubles of the flesh before you go on to there. But Isaac, amen, had that strength. Why? Because he remembered the relationship with his father was so strong that how his father was, that is exactly how he wanted to be. And that is what enabled Isaac to go on to become very great. Hallelujah. And that's what Elijah is come to do to the end uh, is to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. Amen. The church will be made great if the fathers, amen, uh, have got something not just great. It's not enough to be great. For the trouble is like Isaac, if you become great, amen, what happens is that like Isaac, there's still arguments and harassing. When he was called great, he was fighting to dig the well that the Philistines had built in. But then when he became even greater, he still had harassment as he was trying to refill the well again. But it's not until he became very great uh, that there was no arguments and harassings at all. But that's only possible if we as fathers uh, have got something very great from God to pass on to our Children, Baba Kustubi, Baba Kopaya, Mama Kupo. Amen. So when your children see you read the Bible, you got to be reading it not in a great way or a greater way, but a very great way. And that's why the scripture says, uh, and blessed is the man, the very great man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor seats in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law he meditates day and night a very great way. And when your children see you meditate on God's word day and night, you give them something very great to hold on to, which will enable them, amen, as they go through life also to become very great, amen, with peace. And that's what ends up happening to Isaac. Praise be to God. He goes on, and the whole of the Philistines are at peace with him. Why now? Because now he's found his walk with God in a stage that has become very great. And if we don't, amen, uh, it's like one of the famous American footballers, Lombardi, said this, that we pursue perfection. 
Amen. But no man will find perfection. But at least if you pursue perfection, you will find excellence. Praise be to God. And if we don't attempt to give our children to become very great, what happens is that though they may become great men of God, they will still have much harassment and arguments from the flesh. Amen. Praise be to God. Not enabling everything to become at peace with them. But that's only possible if we as fathers become like Abraham. That's what Jesus said to the, the Jews. He says, if you were the children of Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. It's not good enough that our children become great. The only nation in the world to become great is Great Britain. It is called great. But look how Great Britain made some awful and terrible mistakes through history. Amen. Because coming great is not good enough. Uh, praise be to God. Because they weren't following and having a father like Abraham. So that's our prayer. Amen. That we would see. Amen. The responsibility of what it means having children and giving them something very great that you'd remember. American football, as you study it, amen. Always remember when you see the New England Patriots, they became very great. The only team to go a 16 and nil season, perfect season. Why? Because the thing that's holding it together is the relationship between Tom Brady and Belichick, which is father and son, and their lives also. And Belichick was a perfect son to his father, perfect. And so to Tom Brady was a perfect son to his family. And inside of that, God now brings a blessing and doesn't smite the team with a curse. That's why you find teams get cursed. They pick up injuries. The coach gets sacked. And lots of things happen. And why? Because the relationship between the father and son is not like Abraham and Isaac. When it's like Abraham and Isaac, then what you'll see is God will make the team become very great. And that's only by the hand of God. If your church is to become great, it will be based upon the relationships between the sons and the fathers. Amen. Becoming very great like Abraham and Isaac. So if you want your family to become very great, we as fathers, amen, must pass down things to our children Amen. That is very great. Are you trusting God in a very great way? Or is it just great? Are you reading the scripture today in a very great way? Or is it just great? Is your giving to charity very great? Or is it just great? Remember, Great Britain. Amen. And all the mistakes it made because becoming great wasn't good enough. But to some people, becoming great is good enough. But to us, it should not be. And that's our prayer from God. Help us, Lord, please, to become very great. And everything we do, help a prayer, like Jesus said to the apostles, could you not tally with me one hour? Help us as the children of God to be able to tarry and pray in a very great way. Opening up the path. Amen. That God will guide your children in a great way. Only if we as fathers have learned to become very great by the grace and the mercy of God. Amen.